We are one week and one day out from competition. It is Sunday. I'm competing next Monday, which is Monday the 30th of August 2021. I will be going to East of England's Strongest Man. It will be my first strongman competition ever. Hopefully the first of many. It's a beginner's competition. It's a, so it's obviously it's just an amateur competition. I am going to win. Uh, I'm not going there to take second places. I am not going there uh, to take part. Uh, I'm going there to put my all into every event, learn more about uh, me as an athlete uh, and learn more about strongman competitions. Um, I, I understand if you don't understand the mindset that I'm going to win, but I'm not bothered if I lose. Um, I am going to win. I'm going to put my absolute everything into it, um, but I'm just happy to be there. Uh, events wise we have got a silver dollar deadlift which is an 18 inch deadlift slightly below the knee uh, that is at 180 kilos i have been practicing the deadlift uh, in the best way that i can i don't have the cages for the silver dollar deadlift that allow you to load the weights directly into them uh, however i have been pulling off some soft pads i've been pulling off pads that brought the weight up to about 17 inches 16 or 17 inches, uh, which is ideal, really. We go into uh, an overhead medley, which is a giant dumbbell, a single arm dumbbell, 45 kilo, into a log press, which is 80 kilo. Uh, and then it's, it's a bit vague, it says keg, which could be a keg carry, or it could be a keg press, which is a pretty old school strongman movement. It's a 70 kg keg, so I'm guessing it's gonna be a keg press i'm confident with the log right i've got to hit that 80 kilo for for one rep i hit an 86 for three triples um which felt fine that was the first first time i've ever log pressed so i'm happy with that uh, i've been practicing some dumbbell movements that will help me get a stronger log a lot of um front deltoid as long as well with uh sort of some hammer grip uh dumbbell shoulder press which has gone really well after that we're going to frame carry 180 kilo um in the hand 20 meters no uh, no straps so as fast as you can do it i'm confident with that I, I've, I've been practicing that quite a lot uh i think i've got it down to about 8.2 seconds on the day uh obviously with, with being fatigued might add on a little bit so if i if i properly blitz it i reckon i get an 8.6 on the day uh, which will be good going after that we have got our super yoke which is 200 kilo, easy peasy, pop that on the back and run as fast as you can, because you can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. <laughs> Practiced our events at uh, uh, Ultra Flexing Hull, uh, went incredibly well. I got a 220 kilo yoke on my back, did four runs with that. Um, it felt really good. Uh, I feel like yoke's one of those events that um, I'm kind of built for, in the sense that quite broad in the shoulder the bar can sit across there it doesn't it doesn't hurt to sit the bar across my back and maybe i lack the intelligence to think about anything else while i'm doing it but i'm very focused in the moment going into our final event which will probably be our loading medley so that will be implements between 70 kilo and 120 kilo uh, loading them across a i'll probably say 20 meters again pretty pretty happy with that we've been doing these conditioning sessions just like upping the fitness a little bit um making sure that we're out, we're really ballistic going from one point to another and that our like our turns our rotations are very fast as well i feel like that's where events like this are going to be won or lost uh you're going to get people who are probably better than me at carrying things they're probably going to have a bit more of a, a bit more of a keg themselves mm. but i think that where I've got the upper hand is the turn and sprint. We're doing these like, we do jog, sprint, and then drag. Obviously you're doing cardio, cardio, so it's that, it's cardiovascular. It's gonna, it's gonna train your heart. You're gonna be fitter. You're gonna be, uh, you're gonna have a higher aerobic threshold and a better work capacity. Um, but you're also training that ballistic speed to be able to get back 
uh, and get your next thing. You don't want to be that guy that goes super fast for the first, first, first round. You're going head to head against someone and someone's like, oh, he's doing really well. He's doing really well. He's going to win. And then like second implement, he's like slowing down like anything because he's gassing out because he's, he's dying. Medics come on to give him gas and air. I don't want to be that guy. If I am that guy, cut to me getting gas and air from the paramedics in competition <laughs> right now. Um, my training block building up to this comp has been an incredible training block. Uh, I got everything um, here and in my training journal. Um, I've since been back at the gym, we've done an eight week training block. First four weeks was just getting my movements down, getting my form back in good working order. I was nursing a little bit of a knee injury on my right knee. Uh, the knee tracking of the patella wasn't particularly good and I was getting a bit of clicking. No pain, um, just clicking. I was also noting, noticing it's a tiny bit of knee cave, a little valgus uh, in the knee on the way up. It is peak week this week and we have got obviously because i've been building back up from the squat it's only a it's a it's a 162.5 for three sets of three uh, on the squat that's kilograms for our transatlantic cousins we uh, have got a cleaner press which is going to be 92.5 kilograms for three sets of three um i've already been working on my clean and press form just because i feel like it's gonna obviously without with not being able to log press i feel like it's gonna have good carryover for the clean and the log press um, but also just sort of power, power from the floor to overhead. Uh, traditionally, I used to press out the rack, but I've noticed significant increases in my um, in my strength from doing clean and presses. We will be lifting a 225 kilo deadlift for three sets of three, uh, which if you don't know, that is one kilo off 500 pounds. So it'll be 500 pounds for three sets of three. Once again, if you... Uh, are that way inclined um, and we will have single arm dumbbell uh, and I'm sure single arm dumbbell will be uh, competition weight which will be 45 kilos uh, again for three threes this last four week training block has been condensed down into three threes so the weight has got heavier uh, and the volume has gone down uh, obviously keeping the intensity the same um, it's been it's been three by threes the training block before was five by fives were any sessions missed no they were not I know what you're thinking. You look like an absolute athletic specimen. What nutrition modalities have been using to look so good? Well, let me tell you. The first four week training block, not this four week training block, I was at 3,300 calories per day, uh, which consisted of um, a high carb meal in the morning. Uh, first thing, uh, same thing every day is protein pancakes. Here's me making frozen pancakes. Pancakes have berries in and berries on, like red berries for the antioxidants and things. The protein pancakes are literally just like four or five eggs, uh, 90 to 100 grams of oats, a scoop of vanilla casein, protein powder, baking powder, and salt. Make them at home, they're very good. And a banana, it stops them from drying out. Uh, protein pancakes. <laughs> uh, um, then it will be low carb foods, so it will be a snack of a protein shake and um like nuts or maybe an avocado or maybe some beef jerky or biltong so the low 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 carb i'll keep it low carb and then i will train after i have trained i will have a high carb meal so i will fatigue my muscles make the muscle glycogen stores low it doesn't affect my training uh, it doesn't it doesn't affect uh, like the way i feel because i've had that high carb meal at breakfast so i've got ammunition I've got muscle glycogen um, and then I deplete that and I'm, I'm so susceptible to recovery, growth and obviously nutrients my muscles are. I will have a high carb and high protein meal, which will normally be fish and rice cake. It will be like fish and rice. Or like not, like recently, I've been, well, I had salmon and rice, beef and rice or like fajitas, yeah, jerk, jerk chicken and rice. Uh, and like kidney beans and stuff and then the, the rest of it when i'm not my, this literally high carb meal in the morning high carb meal after training all the rest is like working on getting those calories and having low carb food so it will be like my like larger meals will be uh meat and avocado or like meat and veggies uh, like lots of cheese and things now this next four week training block that i've been doing i've coupled it with uh going up to around uh 3900 to 4000 calories just because uh, I want to put on a bit more weight and I want to feel good. Same training, same nutrition modality. So manipulating my insulin levels to 
um, maximize the amount of muscle mass that I can put on. Meal timing's been eaten every couple of hours. Uh, last four week training block, like I say, uh, 3,900 to 4,000 calories a day. Uh, supplements, whey protein um, for obviously calories and higher protein intake. I've been having uh, chocolate, uh, chocolate malted honeycomb at the minute from bulk powders, very tasty, sponsor me. Creatine monohydrate, um, I have it on days that I train. I have uh, two, two scoops, so two five gram scoops, 10 grams uh, on days that I train. So that's Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, and then don't on the days that I don't. I also have caffeine as well in the form of coffee. And if I'm doing an event training session, uh, monster, sugar-free monster, because I like it uh, and it makes me feel nice. Um, I'm under no illusion that it's particularly good for me, uh, but it has caffeine in it. And like I say, I like it. And I try not to drink coffee or have caffeine on days that I don't train, just train, just so I don't develop uh, a dependence on it. Recovery. Um, you hear a lot of people talk about recovery. I've been sleeping very well. I've been working on my sleep hygiene, uh, making sure that my room is always cool uh, and dark. Uh, I have a little diffuser that has like uh, lavender essential oil in it, which will make my room smell of lavender, which obviously promotes sleep. Um, I don't go on my phone a couple of hours before I sleep and I also set it to um, the uh, slightly warmer lighting so that you have got all the blue light in your eyes so it's easy for your body to release the melatonin to get you to sleep. The only other thing that you would kind of say uh, is recovery is cold water dips that's more just for fun um, and for me uh, just I'd say it does more for your brain uh, than it does for your body uh, in the sense that it by overcoming uh, your natural instincts to not throw yourself into cold water um, you develop a certain mental resilience um, but no, it just it just makes you really happy. I think Callum, you can vouch for the fact that it just makes you feel really good. Yeah, it makes you feel good about yourself, really. Yeah, a bit of mental health. Yeah, you just you just feel good, even if it's not enhancing my performance. It is enhancing me mentally, making me feel a bit sharper, uh, making me feel alive, and obviously, uh, makes me feel good. My recovery has been good food, good rest, um, and on my recovery days, doing nothing. Do I feel ready for the competition? Yes, I do. Do you really? Yeah, hundred percent. I'm fairly confident in the in my ability to place place in the top ten. It's about experience. Uh, it's about building up competition etiquette. At the end of the day, I would rather come last in this competition and learn lots about a me. B, about competing in strongman and see where I can go from here and where I can improve um, than come first and learn nothing. This is like the first step. Um, in essence, it's already been taken because I'm already going. I suppose there's a lot of people there that will be training strongman specifically and will have a lot of strongman equipment. So we'll probably um, be more knowledgeable and more proficient with that equipment but i suppose we'll see won't we i suppose we'll see it's all about it's all about building now it's all about going from incredibly well really good did my squats did my 162.5 squats they felt good it's really trying to fix the knee tracking now it's going well squats don't need to be too high though I've got no squat event did my clean and presses had a bit of an injury scare thought thought I'd hurt my arm but uh, luckily I had the help of a very good sports massage therapist, a sports masseur, to help me out. Got my deadlift, four doubles rather than three threes, and I got my single arm dumbbell press. 
45 kilos above the head. Amazing. Peak week couldn't have gone better. The eating's gone well. Just absolutely stuff in my face for the next couple of days with good food, good quality food. That's the goal anyway. Relaxing, not doing too much. Getting myself ready. Prepared mentally, prepared physically. I guess this was, this, you'd say this is our last kind of, if you'd class this as recovery, then this is our last recovery session, our last cold water dip. Mind you, it's not too cold, it's, come on, it's the, it's the end of August. This is the warmest the sea's gonna be for a while, but we're going to the winter, we're going to the deep dark, the bulk, when things get serious. When the mean heads come out. We are halfway down to Peterborough, to the competition. Just stopped for a quick coffee. Um, black Americano. Just starting loading up on the caffeine. Thinking about 500 milligrams of caffeine today. Just to like completely, like obviously that's not a day-to-day -day thing. Just to completely overload it. Go, go wild. Get wired. Go into battle. Smash it. It's pretty early. It's, um, what time is it? 7.47 at the minute. Got to be there. Got to be there for eight, so it's still quite early, but, oh yeah, I technically need to be there in like 13 minutes, but show doesn't start till start on nine, so we'll be all right. Clummy's here, there he is, eating his Greggs, getting Greggs it up. The madman. Got myself loaded up, got everything, got a good night's sleep, seven and a half hours-ish, which was good enjoyed it it was good delicious delicious sleep i'm a little bit tired but once i get this coffee down we get loaded up i had my regular breakfast protein pancakes i was very impressed with myself i managed to get it all almost all of it down which was good i just left one pancake <coughs> <coughs> Which is nothing to turn your nose apart, but yeah, let's crack on.
East of England's strongest beginner, Max Landale. Welcome back to this mortal realm. We're no longer in the land of giants. A um, couple of weeks after competition now, you can probably tell. Hair is shorter, beard is longer, and body is stronger. You are currently feasting your eyes upon East of England's strongest beginner. Here's the credentials to prove it. Glorious, large forearm protruding out of the magma, holding a large dumbbell. And... Uh, shirt. You would have seen me wearing that during competition, a lovely maroon colour. Amazing. Ron Burgundy. Uh, and the medal. You know, just a medal. You know, no biggie. Just needs, it just needs to be the strongest beginner, really. Guilty. The experience was absolutely amazing. It was fantastic to be around people who were like minded, who in Enjoyed the sport of strongman, obviously uh, quite masochistic in the sense that they enjoyed pain as much as I do. And I learned, I learned a massive amount as well as dominating in the process. It was enjoyable to be around people who are, are cut from the same cloth, so to speak. I'm all recovered now. All sorted so I thought this was a good time to talk about my general feelings from the competition and uh, now that I've had time to ferment on those feelings and sort of come to grips with it now the adrenal fatigue's over and uh, everything's uh, done. I'll run through the results quickly just so you can get a gauge of where we were at. First event the overhead medley I uh, came first place I didn't get a time for that. Second event, the deadlift. I was joint first on 19 reps. Third event, the loading medley. You know, you you would have seen, I made a couple of mistakes. I dropped the keg twice like an idiot, broke my finger in the process. We'll get onto that. I came third or fourth in that. You know, let's say fourth. Hashtag stay humble. We'll say fourth. And then Fourth event was the yoke, that was a win. And the last event was frame, and that was a win as well, which rounded it off nicely. I learned a massive amount about strongman as a sport. I learned what my particular strengths are. I learned what my weaknesses are. And I learned what I need to be doing on a competition day to perform better if that's possible and I also learned what I need to be doing on training days and in my training blocks to progress more uh, at certain things which was the whole point which was the whole point I was never seeking glory at a beginner's competition do you know what I mean the glory comes later down the line I'm well well on my journey so yeah I learned I learned a massive amount I was fueled up the whole day on basically sugar and caffeine and there was so much adrenaline absolutely coursing through my veins that I, I struggled with a little bit of adrenal fatigue afterwards a couple of couple of days after I was quite tired a little bit a little bit dull but you know that's what you do when you go into battle you can't expect anything less can you only a couple of things I struggled with was the time in between events there was a good sort of 40 minutes in between each event with the other competitors being there, so I was cold sort of by the end of it and I was impatient, sort of impatiently waiting, having my Lucas aids and things like that. I also struggled with cramp, as you will have seen at the end of the frame carry, at the end of the last event I got some incredibly hard, incredibly painful hamstring cramp and calf cramp, all, all sort of in one, so you know, maybe bananas are in order for next time, a couple of packs of organic bananas perhaps. Uh, and the only other thing I struggled with was needing a wee a lot. But, you know, the toilets were all right. I could um, have a slash in the trough, so to speak. 
whenever I needed to. I was I was pissing like an absolute fountain, to be honest. Guilty, you know. But yeah, that's what you get when you're powering through the caffeine, powering through the Lucozades, and also trying to get the, the hydration, the water in as well. You know, what do you expect? They say when you use your sympathetic nervous system, the, your fight or flight response, that some people uh, soil themselves. Maybe that's what my body was trying to do. I was so hyped up, so in that moment, so ready to go into battle, that I was just sort of peeing. I'm not saying that I peed myself, but you know, you know what I mean. I love competing. It was absolutely amazing. I love winning. Yeah, sure, but I love sort of testing myself in the arena of strength against other strong people and putting my skills to the test. How good? What what could not be enjoyable about that? So the next step is getting stronger. We've got to get in the gym. We've got to get on the grind this winter. We've got to get big and we've got to get strong. That's That's the next step to becoming a strong man. The first competition's been won. I've got a taste for blood and I won't stop till the glory's mine. I'm staying as focused as ever, get my nose to the grindstone, absolutely grinding.com. In fact, I'm gonna go train. <laughs>